V-carb or advanced V-carb? Which one do I use? When should I use it? In this video, we're going to talk about that. Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Edgar with A.A. Timber and Pine. And in this video, we're going to go ahead and continue the custom jujitsu flag that we've been working on. As I was preparing for this video, I thought it would be a good idea to talk about the V-carb and the advanced V-carb since I'm using both toolpaths in this particular project. So rather than just showing you the settings and showing you a clip of the carve being done, I figured I'd go a little bit deeper and explain to you why I chose the particular tool pass that I did. I do want to preface this video and just say that there are a lot of other videos out there that may be a little bit more technical, a little bit more in depth. As you may know, my videos are kind of short and to the point just because I want to get you guys going and started carving. So I'm going to try to get you the information that you need quickly so that way you can get carving. So let's just jump right into the V-Carve toolpath. The V-Carve toolpath is one of the most essential toolpaths that I think you're going to be able to use that you need to know because it's a great toolpath for carving letters, carving some images, carving uh, lines, but also if you're a flag builder like me, you're going to need to use it for your stars. I think it's very important to use the V-Carve toolpath for your stars. The V-Carve gives us that very unique identifiable carve that v carve into the material and i believe this is because from its inception in 1932 just kidding guys it just it just looks like a v right it just has that v carve into the material i think that's really why it's called the v carve let's just go ahead and jump into some very popular diagrams that are already out there in the facebook groups and also online and let's just walk through those diagrams that helped me out when i was first starting out jumping into this first diagram i'm not familiar with who owns this diagram or who created it but it is a diagram that is very popular in the Facebook groups and different forums. So if you know who created this, please let me know and I can add credit in the description of this video. This diagram starts off with a V carve with a set max depth. This would be an instance where you decide to manually enter a max depth. In this example, the max depth is going to be set at 0.25 or a quarter of an inch. What we immediately see is that the wider the angle of the V bit, the wider the carve we are going to get. The 90 degree V bit is wider than the 30 degree V bit, therefore the carve will be wider. As we move down to the 60 degree V bit, we see that it's still carving to the same max depth of quarter of an inch, but it's still a shallower angle of a V bit, therefore it's not as wide as the 90 degree V bit carve. And, and we see the same thing for the 45 and the 30 degree V bit. As the angle gets shallower, the less wide it's going to carve. I personally don't do a lot of manual or fixed max depth when using a V carve. But if you decide to do so, this is something you'll need to keep in mind. The angle of the bit determines the width of the cut. The next part of the diagram is an explanation of what I think is most common and how I understand and use the V-carve toolpath. The general rule of thumb when setting up a V-carve toolpath is to set your max depth to stock bottom or the thickness of your material. This allows the program to determine the max depth it will carve. Using the specification of the V-bit, such as the angle, and also the distance of the vector lines of your design, the program will calculate and determine how deep it needs to carve so that the V-bit carves deep enough until both edges of the vectors of your design are touched by the edges of the V-bit. So if we use this letter as an example, the letter L, the V-bit will carve as deep as it needs to until the edges of the V-bit touch the edges or the sides of this letter. Going back to the diagram, the red dots are the edges of the vectors or the edges of the letter that we just saw. So let's assume that it is the letter L, for example. In this diagram, the edges of the vectors are not changing, right? They're, the red dots are in the same location for each carve or for each V-bit. What we can see is that since the 90 degree V-bit is the widest, it has the shallowest cut because it did not have to carve as deep for the edges of the V-bit to meet the edges of the vector. As we progress down to the 30 degree V-bit, the V-bit has to carve deeper to allow for the edges of the V-bit to meet the edges of the vector. The takeaway here is that the angle of the V-bit determines the depth of the cut, and this is calculated and determined by the program. Here's another example of the same thing we just talked about. The red dots represent the edges of the vectors, and we see the same thing. The wider the angle, the shallower the carve. The shallower the angle, the deeper the carve. Please feel free to pause and review these diagrams, as it may take some time to wrap your head around this. It did for me when I first started out. So take your time and you'll come out all the better on the other side if you take some time to review these. All right, so that's the V-Carve toolpath. How does it differ from the advanced V-Carve toolpath? Let's go ahead and talk about that now. Just a real quick explanation of what the advanced V-Carve is, just to define the terms. The advanced V-Carve toolpath is a V-Carve with a flat bottom. Carve I Create decided to call it the advanced V-Carve, while other programs I've seen while I'm looking online it's just this V-carve with the flat bottom selected. While they're setting up toolpaths on these other programs, they're going to select a V-carve toolpath, 
but there's an option for a flat bottom to be selected. So advanced V carve and the V carve with a flat bottom is the exact same thing. Since I'm using Carbide Create and my tutorials are really geared towards Carbide Create users as of right now, we're gonna go ahead and keep calling it advanced V carve. The advanced V carve in my opinion is just a better pocket toolpath. A regular pocket toolpath is great for carving out material, carving out shapes, carving out simple basic areas. But once you start getting into more detailed carves, this is where the advanced V-carve really shines. The advanced V-carve will allow you to get into the areas where a regular pocket with just a single end mill cannot get. So the advanced V-carve really works well when you have a design or a logo with sharp corners, sharp transitions. In those designs, you wanna use the advanced V-carve. Another great feature of the advanced V-carve toolpath is that you are able to enable a pocket tool first or enable a pocket toolpath first. Essentially, you are going to be able to use your end mill to be able to clear out a lot of area first or a lot of material. And then a V-bit will come in at the end and clean up the remainder of the logo or whatever it is you're carving. And one last thing before we get to carving using the advanced V-carve, the advanced V-carve does require a max depth, a set max depth that you are going to manually enter. Unlike the V-carve toolpath where you select stock bottom or the thickness of your material and allow the program to determine the max depth, when using the advanced V-carve toolpath, you need to set a max depth because in this case, the end mill or the V-bit will go through the entire piece of the material. So just keep that in mind. When you are using the advanced V-carve, you do need to set a max depth that is less than the thickness of your material. My suggestion for the max step would be between 0.02 and 0.05. I really don't think that you need to go much deeper than that because all we're trying to do is get the stain off the very top of the material to be able to show the natural wood underneath. So with that being said, let me go ahead and show you now the advanced V-carve toolpath on this custom jujitsu flag. All right guys, so let's go ahead and pick it up back where we left off. We're gonna go ahead and set up the toolpath now on this custom flag. Once you get several flags created and under your belt, it's really all the same. You kind of pick up your own style, what you like, what you prefer. And so for me, stars are always going to be V-carves. Stripes are always going to be advanced V-carves. And logos like this that are nice and kind of blocky, got a lot of corners, that to me is also an advanced V-carve toolpath. So it's very simple. You kind of get into your own habit of what toolpaths you want to use. So let me just go ahead and set these up once again. And the settings for me are what works. I'm not an expert in feed or speed rates, but these are what work. I like my toolpaths in groups, so let's go ahead and create our groups. The stars are already grouped, so that's good. The easiest thing to do next is going to get this circle logo, so we can just highlight this general area, and I can get the entire logo in one swoop. So go ahead and group that. Next, I can go ahead and do the entire flag, but now I can hold shift and deselect the stars by clicking on it, deselect the logo by clicking on it now, all while holding shift. Now I have all my stripes selected and I can go ahead and group those now as well. With that done now, I can go ahead and create my toolpaths. I'll start with the stars. So go ahead and select them, click on toolpaths. Go ahead and ignore group one and two, that's for another job. But in, under group three, we're gonna go ahead and do a V-carve. We're gonna select, use current selection. We're going to use a 60 degree V-bit. I'm going to change my depth per pass to 0.15. I'm going to change my plunge rate to 80, my feed rate to 90, RPM at 18,000. All right, so now that I have that up, with that updated, go ahead and click OK. In my max step, I'm going to use stock bottom. I'm going to name it stars, click OK. Since both the stripes and the logo are going to be advanced V-carve, just to save time, we can go ahead and do both at the same time. So go ahead and click on the stripes and go ahead and hold shift and click on your circle logo. Go ahead and then click advanced V-carve, use current selection. We're going to enable area pocket tool to speed up this process. We're going to edit this tool. We're going to select a tool and we're going to click on our end mill area here. And we're going to use the 201 end mill, which is our quarter inch end mill. We're going to go ahead and change our plunge and feed rate to 80, 90 as well. RPM at 18,000. Our depth per pass, we can leave it at 0 0.060 because our max depth will not exceed this value. So go ahead and click OK. Once we have the quarter inch end mill set up, we are going to use a 60 degree V-bit to come in and clean up those finer areas or the, get the detail that we need that the quarter inch end mill was not able to get. So go ahead and click on edit on this tool. We're going to change the plunge and feed rate again to 80, 90 RPM at 18,000. We're going to keep the depth per pass at 0.1 and click OK. Our max depth, we're going to keep at 0 0.04. Anything between 0 0.02 and 0 0.05, in my opinion, will work just fine. And go ahead and name it whatever you'd like. I got it named as stripes and logo. So go ahead and click OK. Let's go ahead and take a look at that simulation. 
All right, guys, so there you have it, a nice looking simulation, a nice looking flag. What I like to do when I send this off to the machine is I like to disable my stripes and logo. I'm going to disable that. I do this because I like to set my Z0 at the area of where the union is going to be. Once I finish the stars, I then re-zero my Z closer to anywhere in this general area where the logo is at. The reason why I do that is to account for any variation in the height of the material. It may be lower or higher here than it is over here. It also could be the way that I secure my material onto my wasteboard. It may be more secured down here, maybe a little bit lower than it is in this general area. All right guys, so let's go ahead and send this off to the machine. In the following clips, I'm just showing you the VCARP and the advanced VCARP tool pass that I ran. If you don't want to watch this, go ahead and skip forward to the end. But in this video, I did keep the clips longer so that you can see the actual carves.